Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This talk is brought to you by Ion Connect. This state-of-the-art networking space and tech lab helps grow innovative ideas from applied research and development, testing and engineering qualification to commercialization and market launch. Our speaker is Catherine Rochler. Catherine is a business impact strategist who is passionate about creating positive social change through business. This passion now drives her value-based business and goal to attain B Corp certification. Catherine believes changing the world through business requires changing the rules of business. It's now time for you, my VBN members and most welcome guests, to put your hands together and give Catherine Roshlow a warm Vancouver Business Network welcome. Hi, and good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for coming out on this wet, rainy Vancouver night. But I'm so excited to be here and to share with you a little bit more about what I ha have taken on as my purpose in business and to be moving forward. So what my goal is tonight is to help each and every one of you learn a little bit more about a B Corp, a benefits corporation, and how you can run a really values-based, purpose-driven business that not only is profitable for you, is a great place for people to work, but is also a, a, a mechanism that makes a positive impact on people and the planet that are around us. Okay, that's, that's my goal for tonight. So hopefully we'll get there. Now, I don't know about how many of you, but how many of you have ever worked in a, in a job that you absolutely hated and were dying to get out? Okay, fair number of us in this room. I know that that is one of my reasons for becoming an entrepreneur. I used to go from this from job to job. Every couple of years, that was my that was my role. And what I found was that there were two, three reasons that I would want to leave. The obvious one is I had learned everything I could in that job. I had literally hit the ceiling and it was time for a change. That's a pretty logical one. The worst case scenario was when you had a terrible boss and that boss was either abusive or was constraining or was, you know, not a nice person and you wanted to just leave because you had a bad boss. Did you know that 85% of employees leave jobs or work in jobs that they hate? Well, I hate to admit it, but I was in a lot of jobs that I hated because I have really bad bosses. And it, but it took me a long time to realize that was, my, that was the cause of me wanting to change jobs so much. The other thing that was really interesting is that the other reason that I was challenged was I didn't align with the values and the purpose of the companies that I worked with. Now, my background was in food service management and healthcare. I'm a real big advocate of having great health care. I'm a great advocate of helping other people. And I was in an industry that I felt did exactly the opposite. And that pushed me away. And so I actually moved out of the healthcare industry into business and really took on this role of leadership, communication, team dynamics with a fervor. And it was my role as a leader in every single company that I worked with, whether I was happy or not, to create a great workplace for the people who reported to me. And I worked at that very, very hard over and over and over again. I said the best compliment I had for my employees was they would tell me, you're tough, but you're fair, and I like working with you. That was the best thing that I could have somebody tell me. So this, quote actually really reinforces that desire that I have of ha helping businesses to actually advance so that they can also be great places to work, but also do more than just make money. 
So the term, and you'll see this now everywhere, the term impact we're seeing everywhere, okay? It's sort of like what Ignite was before, and my business was around before Ignite was hot, and impact was here before it, impact was hot. I just kind of am a leader in those trends. But impact businesses are actually for-profit businesses that are balancing their purpose with their desire to make money. Pretty easy in an essence, but they also want to use their business as a force for good. So you want to do more than just deliver your product or service. So last week when the audience, I asked how many of you in this room think you're making a, a, a positive impact in the world? And almost every single hand went up in the room. We all think we're making an impact through our businesses. And when I ask the question, how many of you are measuring the impact that you're making, there were no hands being raised. And the reason for that is that most of us want to believe that what we're delivering, the product and service that we're delivering is actually making an amazing impact on the lives of other people, helping them do something faster, easier, quicker, getting their, their businesses to grow, getting their uh, getting people to communicate better. It doesn't matter what it is. And you know what? I agree. We all are making a phenomenal impact if that's the definition that we have. The definition of an impact business is somebody who makes an impact that was not, did not sort of preset. So it's how can you take your business, that purpose that you're driving and that impact that you want to make, and how do you now create that ripple effect? And that's why I like the water droplet. When you think about a water droplet hitting the surface of water, it actually creates this disruption. And I see us, those of us who want to make a difference in the world through our businesses as key disruptors, just like any leader is. But what we do is we are creating that impact. We start with maybe who's in our business, then we work out and we work out and we work out. And the, the goal is to make a, a bigger impact with a greater scope of people as well as with the planet. So all stakeholders. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the triple bottom line, but that's what the triple bottom line encompasses, that ability to look at all stakeholders. So I'm, I'll come back to that as we go forward. I, I wanna share an example and I'll, I'll do so with, with this uh, slide. But one of the things is I actually have a client who ha is uh, here in Vancouver actually, has a, an impact business, creates, uh, develops housing, uh, social housing. Um, and in the Vancouver market, then, uh, things are really tough for renters, especially if you don't have a lot of money. And her goal as a developer is to create social housing that people can afford. And for some, they'll do a rent to own and others are going to to um, just rent. So it, it depends. She's, she's got a, a variety of different models. The interesting thing is that while we were um, talking, she told me about an, a development program that she had, and I have the, her permission to share this. Um, but what it was is that she actually said, I have this opportunity to develop a, a condo complex, but I don't think I'm going to take it. And I said, okay, tell me about it. And she said, you know what, this is a project that is going to be in a great neighborhood here in Vancouver. It is going to be a medium size. So it's not going to be a high rise. It's going to be a low rise because it has to fit into that neighborhood. It is, but the problem is it has no social housing as part of it, but I'm going to make a boatload of money. And I said, okay, so let's turn back the steps a little bit. What about this don't you like? No social housing and too much profit. I'm going, okay, no social housing, get that. Too much profit, don't get that. Let's take it back. So I said, so tell me where I'm missing something. You build things, you use mass timber, which is, I'm sure Kyle, but it's a replacement for for concrete because it has a lower carbon footprint. So this mass timber has less off gassing, it reduces the carbon footprint, it's environmentally sound. You're going to be hiring the people that you hire and she hires people who ha have 
difficult backgrounds that have all of the skills and training, but have had bumps along the way. So she's got a social purpose for the people she hires. She's using environmental products. We talked about LEAD, as in the, the LEAD program for building, which it allows her to be more environmentally and sustainable in the building. We talked about, and I said, and she said, well, and I also would like to build a hospital in Africa for children and their families so that they can be healthy and contribute back to the world as they grow up. Okay. So we're going to take this massive prop, prop, uh, profit when we build this building for high-end consumers and we can use all of these green initiatives in the building of this and take that profit and we're going to you know, use these employees that are needing work and we're now going to take that profit, we're going to build a hospital and fund that hospital for several years so that children can become meaningful contributors to society as they grow because they're healthy. What part of impact am I missing? She was dumbfounded. We took what is a traditional business model in her mind and flipped it into an impact business model. She was ready to throw that project out the door. I just talked to her in order to get permission to share it with you tonight and found out she is now taking steps to actually implement that. And we have already identified four more initiatives she can build into that project if she actually goes ahead. It's a phenomenal opportunity. So what she has is an impact business because she has an intention for doing good. She has measured efforts. We have been able to identify what are all the things that she can do that she can measure and report on so that people will know all the good things she's doing, even though the building unto itself is not considered social impact housing. Sounded good to me. She is looking at the prosperity of people, profit, and people, profit, and planet. So she's looking after herself as a company and a business owner. She's looking after all of the employees that she has, and she has multiple teams. She's also looking after the planet with all of her green initiatives and she's looking after people not necessarily in her community but taking it the other thing is all of those profits can be reinvested in her business and she can build more social housing that's what i call the triple win okay so whenever you see me do this you'll know it's a triple win so that's what you're looking at so it's looking at all aspects of your business how can you take that forward how can you do that and still come out as a profitable sustained business that people like to buy from and people like to work with. And it's interesting, I've had an opportunity to talk to her staff and her staff love working with her because they get the purpose of her business. And I love that. So when we look at what are all of those stakeholders, this is how I sort of see it. It is like a honeycomb that you are all connected in every aspect. So we take the fact that traditional businesses focus on shareholder wealth. And for anybody who has been listening to the news, you'll have heard that the group of CEOs of multinational companies put out a statement about two and a half, three weeks ago that said that corporations must no longer be just there for the profits of their uh, shareholders. They need to be there for the prosperity of all stakeholders. What we now need to see is action on that statement but it's at least a first step. So we start with shareholders, shareholders that might be just you if you're a solopreneur. It might be that you have investors. It might be that you have partners. It might be that you have um, employees. Um, and I think you mentioned earlier that you, or sorry, it was you, you mentioned that you were looking at how to link nonprofits with businesses. And this is one way because those nonprofits can actually become a shareholder of a business. And I'd love to have a chat with you about that. And I'll talk a little bit more as I go through, but that can actually be one model. So your shareholders can be employees. It could be a, a nonprofit. It could be just investors, um, whatever. So we've got that. There's one facet. We also want to look at our workers. Now, as I said, some workers could be shareholders, but also how are we paying our employees? Judy mentioned about having benefits for our employees. 
Do you have a benefits plan? When I actually re was uh, running a team, one of the things that I realized is we paid a competitive rate, but they didn't have a, a, a retirement plan. And I was able to negotiate at no significant cost a superior, um, a superior retirement plan for that team that actually increased our retention of our team by 35% over one year, just by adding that. The cost of replacing one employee who is paid at minimum wage is $10,000 if you have to replace that one employee. I was working with professionals. My team were all professionals making in excess of $25 an hour. So if I had to replace one of them, it was actually going to cost me significantly more. And we often will say it can cost you two to four times the salary, depending on the length of time it takes in order to get the amount of training that's needed. So it's something to keep in mind. So your workers are a key stakeholder. Your customers, conscious consumerism is now the word that is defining what consumers are like. Consumers now want to buy from and interact with companies that have a purpose that they align with. Okay, so that I'm actually getting renovations done in my house as we speak. And I hired my client to actually do those because their purpose aligns with my values and their values align with my values. It was a perfect fit. And I liked their work and their prices were competitive and all these other things. I loved the triple win. That's what we're looking for when we look at that. But I also not only looked at my, my, my customer and my supplier, so she would be my supplier, but I looked at, I wanted to know what are her suppliers? Who does she buy supplies from that are gonna be used in my house? That's something you want to be looking at. Then I looked at what's the impact on the community and then what's the impact on the environment. So as you can see with every business, we have the ability to what, navigate through this with just asking a few questions and aligning them with who we are, what we do, and why it's important to us. And that is how you can take the triple bottom line and move it to your benefit. So when you have the triple bottom line, it is those three Ps, people, profit, and planet. So when we look at people, those are the people that work in your company, including yourself. How are you looking after yourself? How are you looking after the people who work with you? Are those people that are working with you, they may be contractors, they may be employees, they may be temporary, they may be permanent, it does not matter. What you really want to know is how can you make them engaged and committed parts of your team so that your business is great. People who work in companies that don't align with the values, don't like where they work, are not very productive. And so when you can turn somebody from unproductive, unengaged into productive, not only are they productive and help you make more money, they provide better customer service and they're more innovative. So if you're in the business of ideas and creating opportunities, having, or having workers who are in alignment with you <coughs> is going to boost innovation, which ultimately can improve your, your um, your peak or your profitability. Profitability, don't have to say much. We still want that. My take on profitability is that every business is in the market to make money so that we can reinvest into the world around us, but also into our businesses so that we grow. And you could talk to Michaela for scaling. Um, but basically, we want businesses to grow. We want businesses to be uh, thriving. And we want them to be able to now invest in other things. And so that's why I say profit to me, it's, it's one term, it's often negative, And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but profit is not a bad word. And then obviously planet is that environmental side. It doesn't always mean that you, you're making big changes. I love to see where people make small changes. So one of the small changes that I made, and I'll be right with you, Roger, one of the small changes that I made was that I actually was went to Staples because I needed paper, I needed it really fast. I walked in, I normally pick up the recycled paper and I walk out. It's really quick, it's really easy, I know what I want. And I looked and I went, 
wow, look at the price. It had actually jumped in price significantly. It forced me because one of the things is profit. I'm going to look at the money side. I looked and I said, what else is on the shelf? When I looked on the shelf, I found another pack of paper that was 95% sugar cane. That paper was also $2 less for a pack than my recycled paper. So here I saved money. I did have a lower carbon footprint and it's fabulous paper. And I have actually made more connections by talking about paper than anything else. So I, it, it was a simple thing, but it's one thing to add to the next, to the next. Yes, Roger. How does the millennial employee mm -hmm. <clears throat> persuade the boomer boss to be, uh, to, to, to join the 3P movement? In fact, what we're seeing is a lot of boomers are actually, uh, 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 oh, sorry, have to repeat the question. <laughs> so how does the millennial employee get the boomer boss to embrace the triple bottom line? And so what I have found is I am seeing more and more boomers adopting the triple bottom line. And part of it is because they are at a point where they're re-evaluating their own purpose and their own mission and values. I also see it because some of it is being pushed by millennials. But it, so what I'm seeing is it has to do with having a conversation and sharing actionable ideas that bosses can actually, it aligns with what a boss needs to do. So some of them are thinking still profit and, and productivity. They're not looking at some of these other things. How do these activities answer this problem. And when you actually align the two and have a conversation, what I find is the boomers are actually moving. So you always have that advocate in your team that actually gets people to actually move forward. Yeah, so it is, that's an excellent question. And I do see that quite often in, and you know, it's interesting because I'm getting a lot of questions from boomers on how to actually advance their businesses in this way. They want to attract great employees. They want to, to have a purpose beyond just making money. And so I think it's just, they've got to that point in their, in their lives. And, and I think it's, it's fabulous from my perspective. <laughs> but the one thing you wanna do with the triple bottom line and one of the factors of the triple bottom line is that measurement component. You need to be able to measure what you're doing and be able to report on it in a transparent way with great integrity. And this is the area that most, especially boomers, are having the most difficulty with because they're used to keeping things close to the book, close to the breast. They don't know how to necessarily share some of this information where it, they think it might take away from their competitive edge. And so that is still one of the biggest challenges that I'm seeing with boomers in comparison to millennials. Millennials, it's, it's out there anyway. Yeah. This is just another graphic. I threw it in just because I wanted to show you that there, it, it's not an all or one. It is actually a cumulative sort of interactive way of actually getting things together so that you get that sustainability in business. Sustainability has to have all three Ps, but it has to have that bearable, viable, and equitable component in it in order to actually make it sturdy. So I always say it's like the three-legged stool. If one of the legs is slightly off, you're going to tip a little bit. And that's where I find that the, those, that inner sector is actually where we're getting a lot more stability as we move forward. So I wanted to kind of just address that because I know it's, it's definitely an issue. This is how I actually see the movement that we are now in. Traditional businesses, profit oriented, stakeholder driven, or I mean, sorry, shareholder driven, that's their purpose. As you want to move forward and actually become more purpose driven to have an impact beyond your own profits, you are moving along the impact business spectrum and moving into an impact business model. This new model is one of those models that allows you to move from shareholder focus to stakeholder focus. And the stakeholder focus is your people profit planet, okay? So 
when we talked, we had the question earlier about what is a B Corp, and one of the answers was it's a benefit corporation. It actually is more than just a, a benefit corporation. You could still be a traditional style business and a legal entity type business that is traditional, but have more and more impact measures. And we see a lot of companies that interact the two, but I'm gonna show you what that hard right is, which is more of the, the B Corp model. So when we look at impact business models, we have two distinct categories and they're often confused. So the benefit corporation is the legal entity of, of an impact business. So just like a corporation, just like a partnership, just like a sole proprietorship, it's a legal entity and it's a corporate structure. It just has the difference with a benefit corporation is that the articles of incorporation actually stipulate that you are there for the benefit and the, the ultimate success of all stakeholders. And it's written in, so it now becomes a core part of your operation. And it's something that you now have to report on because you're legally obligated to do so. In British Columbia, we are the first province in Canada to actually have the new legal entity of benefit corporation. At last time I looked um, last week, we still don't have anything on the government's um, sort of business sort of uh, website that actually shows you how to transition your company. If you wanted to go, like my company is an incorporated company, I want to actually transition my company into a benefit corporation. It's a logical fit for what I do. It would just take me, instead of being a, a corporation, I would actually be a benefit corporation but it was a brand new um, legislation that's come. It is coming, and as it comes, I will be sharing that more with people going forward. A benefit corporation is also available in 35 states in the US, as well as in DC. It's also in Italy, Puerto Rico, and Colombia. There is legislation underway in Australia and the UK, and so we are seeing this is a movement to actually have more and more companies. The number one question I get is why would I want to move to a benefit corporation and what's the tax benefits? If you are values driven and you want to make a difference and you want that as part of the culture of your business, a benefit corporation structure is a great structure to take on. From a tax perspective, it's exactly the same. There is no difference. In the United States, they have S corps and C corps and they have LLCs. The, the tax structure in the US is exactly the same as an S corp or a C corp. So I share that because online listeners may be from outside of uh, British Columbia. So just so you know, that's the difference. But having said that, I was talking with a, a tax expert in the US just last week and I asked him, what would you say are some of the benefits that any corporation, no matter where they are in the world, could actually gather from having that switch? And a lot of it has to do with when you make some of these changes, you are actually going to have some tax benefits because if you have a give back that is attached to your revenues, you're gonna have a write off because it is a tax donation. You may end up with um, reduced turnover. So you're gonna save money. So now you're actually going to be doing better. So there are some hidden benefits it's just working through and so I'm in the process of, of chatting with him for us to identify a lot more and again I'm going to be sharing those as as I learn more because I needed to understand the differences between Canada and the US and we didn't have a benefit court before and so it is something that I'm on that new learning curve as well so I I share that openly with each of you because it is so new now a certified B Corp I am on the final stages of actually taking my company through the certification process. The certification process is actually available to any type of company and it's also global. So it doesn't matter where you live in the world, whether or not there's a benefit corporation because these are two totally different things. Okay, so you could be just a regular corporation that decides you want to undergo the certification process. The certification process is offered by a nonprofit in the US called B-Lab. You can actually go through with, um, and B-Lab has this 
questionnaire that you have to fill out. You have to actually document. So anybody who's been in healthcare or has been in um, industries where you would actually have to do certification, um, buildings, it would be the LEED uh, certification, uh, fair trade is a certification, all of those kinds of things. There's different industries with different certifications. That's exactly what it is. So you go through this, you document what you've done, you put the systems in place, you show your results, you present those to B-Lab, and for a, a nominal fee, you end up, if you get and your score is above 80, you can actually become a certified B Corp and you have to recertify every three years. So if you are a sole proprietor, but you like the idea of being a certified B Corp because it is, I'd say it, there's gravitational pull when you have that logo. What happens is you actually now attract people who are like-minded and they'll see that logo. There are companies who are benefit corporations and certified B Corps at the same time. Okay, one example is Patagonia, the clothing people. Okay, many of you I'm sure are familiar with them. They are a benefit corporation in the US and they're a certified B Corp. Yes? How much does it cost to become a certified B Corp? How much does it cost to become a certified B Corp? That varies on depending on the size of your company, but for most of us with small businesses, you're looking probably about $1,000. So it's not an excessive amount of money. Um, it's more your time and putting the systems in place. Um, prior to that, that might be more of your investment, but from a monetary perspective, it, it's actually quite reasonable. But that's sort of an approximate. Bigger companies, it's gonna cost a little more. Yes. $1,000 a month, a no. year, or is it one time? For the one time for the certification, that gives you, if you pass, that's three years of certification, and then you would just pay it again in three years. So the question was, um, do you have to pay that $1,000 uh, once uh, or a month, or is it, how, how is it paid? And that's what it is, it's, it's for all of them. Sorry, I'll keep her forgetting to repeat my questions. <laughs> was there another question that somebody had? No? Okay, so does that make sense? So the certification process is, is, is anybody can do it, and it allows you to put that logo on your website, on all your marketing materials. It is a magnet for people. So why would you want to consider an impact business? Well, the Burnaby Board of Trade, very fortunately for me, and I'm a, I'm a member with the Burnaby Board of Trade, actually did a survey to ask businesses that have an impact model, what were the number one things that they felt were important and how did they actually get benefits? So this is the list they came up with. One, reduced costs. So I've talked about the turnover. I've talked about, often, oftentimes it's when we start using things like our equipment longer, or being able to sell off things that we no longer need instead of keeping them stored and actually now buying things. Maybe it could be by reducing your carbon footprint, you're actually going to reduce your energy bills. Different things like that happen. So those are the kinds of things. That increased worker engagement, attraction, and retention is one of the number one drivers. It's also the number one problem that I hear from employers when we talk about business structures and business growth is that people are their biggest expense, but in my mind, they're also our biggest benefit, our biggest return on investment. So I hope that it, it, we can shift there. It does give you brand, brand lift. You do actually become connected with people who have similar values to you and you actually people kind of will recognize and what happens is it spreads so when people ask me so what kinds of products do you buy i can actually name off different products that i buy because they have they meet those values and it's interesting how many people have actually gone oh can i can you share where you got that can you show me what that looks like so it does actually help your brand it also helps you with business innovation. I mentioned that a little bit earlier, but when employees are engaged, they're more innovative. And when you actually feel like you're making a positive change in the world, you want to do more so that you can do more. Easy one to do. Also, they found that companies who have an impact business model are more resilient in every economic condition. So when the economy is slow, 
impact businesses tend to do better. And when the, when the economy is great, they also do better. So they weather the storms and they, they shine when, when the sun is out. And I think for me, that is one of the key things that I really grasped on that I want to not go on a roller coaster ride. I don't mind gentle hills, but I don't want to be on a roller coaster with my business. And so that one really connected for me. Here's just a few logos of different companies all over that you might be familiar with. So I've got some here that are, are BC based. Um, sea to Sky Removal, they actually um, will actually separate out uh, construction waste and they actually repurpose, reuse and recycle and minimize what goes into the garbage. Salt Spring Coffee, for most of us are familiar with that. Hootsuite, everybody knows about Hootsuite. Um, they do. Um, their Coast Capital Savings, North, Northern, uh, Northern Savings Credit Union. Those are two credit unions here in British Columbia that actually are B Corp certified. Uh, Persephone uh, Brewery, they're actually on the Sunshine Coast and they are. Uh, Fairware does promotional products. Um, so they, they have some, but you know, there's others like Ben and Jerry's, Patagonia, Tom's Shoes, or Tom's of Maine that has the, the um, other things. Uh, a Linker um, is, is a company here in, in British Columbia that has actually walkers that allow people to stand up instead of being hunched over. I loved their model when I saw it. Um, the Reframe Group, this is a, a company that I became familiar with and uh, they actually were amazing. Um, and he, he and I actually took a course, the owner took, he and I took a course together um, and he had, he, He's done that in less than a year. He became fully um, B Corp certified. Um, so, and I put in the Amalgamated Bank, um, Oceans uh, for the Tuna People, Gold Seal. Um, so you can see there are so many different areas, but this is global. This is everywhere. And that is one of the benefits is you aren't restricted to being anywhere. Every industry, every kind of business can be B Corp certified and they are held to a higher standard. Yes, yes, you go. How long does it take to go through the whole process? I, I said, I, for on average, I find, oh, sorry, thank you for the cue. Remember to say the question. So how long does it take to go through the certification process? It can take anywhere. It depends on how much you have in place in your business. The average, I would say, is about nine months to a year. But if you have a lot of things in place, you might be able to do that in as short as six months. Um, it, a lot of it is, is making sure you've got the documentation and the documentation isn't just now, some of it you have to actually look backwards and some of it you have to wait to accumulate because you didn't actually measure your impact going forward. So it depends, it's an individual thing, uh, but it's a really, really good question. Yes, Roger, and then I'll, I'll no, do this one. Oh, yeah. you? Okay. Well, I, I, I mean, I attended, I was invited to one of those uh, meetings initially, uh, I guess the Vancouver Foundation or whatever, yes. and I was, um, I guess the, the two things, um, because we're fairly small, I mean, we're a consulting company, mm -hmm. but I was looking at it for uh, one of our project development companies, and the two things, I guess, for the B Corp certification is one, uh, it's the employment, right? It's the, it's the human resource component. One is the ensuring that you have fair hiring practices. What I notice, I might, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, the two components I thought was, you know, everything, one was the environmental impact, right? So you've got to be green and, and recycling and all that kind of stuff. And the other part was the human hiring and fair wages and all that kind of stuff. So those were the, I mean, is it is it pretty much like, a, I, I didn't get into the details because I went for the initial presentation, but uh, it seems to me, depending on the organization, you can sort of, say so, yeah we follow these two it seems like those are the two biggest components the, those are two of the five areas so they actually look at your governance okay. they look at your workers they look at the community they look at your supply chain right. they look they they look at um they, they look at the environment so it is in all different areas it is a full 360 evaluation of your business even if you don't choose to become certified as a B Corp, mm -hmm. to go through that assessment and actually 
identify where you are doing well and where you could improve is actually a wonderful opportunity for each and every one of us to do better with our businesses. So when remember on that spectrum, I said you had traditional businesses and you had impact businesses. My goal when I work with my clients is to move them along that spectrum as far as they want to go and at the speed they want to go. They don't have to become certified. If they want that, then it's great. So in answer to your question, yes, there are two big areas. Workers and environment are two significant, but there's lots more. And you know what? You don't have to be a big company because if you don't have a lot of a lot of employees, you set things up so that when you want to scale, you'll have them in place. So, so something that, and I'll talk a little bit about a few strategies that you can do. So great question. Yeah. So Coast Capital is a credit union. Yes operating in a highly competitive marketplace with nine other credit unions in Metro Vancouver. Why would the other nine not likewise have gone the route of Coast Capital in order to preserve at a minimum their competitive equality? Mm -hmm. So the question is Coast Capital, who is a credit union here in British Columbia, um, they have gone the B Corp certification route. And why do the other nine um, credit unions in this marketplace not also follow suit um, in order for them to maintain their competitive advantage against um, uh, Coast Capital? And, and the answer is that, that people have to buy in um, to this whole philosophy. They also have to do the work. And for some organizations, the value proposition hasn't quite clicked yet. That would be my take on it. Every organ, the one that actually always surprised me was Van City, um, because Van City has so much about um, about that. They actually also have a division that is a B Corp out of Toronto. So I always found that interesting. So that's just me. I'm I'm a Van City member. I'm also a Coast Capital member. So I, I can comp I compare the two all the time. And it was just one of those things. So everybody has to make the decision for themselves and to determine if it's worth it to them. In my opinion, it would be worth it to them. They just have to probably learn and understand it and then identify how to move it forward. Yeah, really good question. Yeah, Follow up question to that. Um, seems to me I'm a member of Van City and, and the reason I'm, I'm very involved with Van City is because they're not a corporation, they're a, they're a cooperative. So they're organized as a cooperative. So it seems to me, it would be redundant for them to be getting B Corp certifications. A, they're not legally a corporation, and B, I mean the the the, the documents of Van City basically, as you know, the book money and all that kind of stuff. So through their cooperative sort of um, vision, they I think I think that is that correct? No, I'm not sure. Is both capital a, a co-op or, or not no. a corporation? No. But if I take you back to this, remember a benefit corporation you must be a corporate entity. Right. A certified B Corp, you can be any entity, including a cooperative. And so just to go back for that question, the question was why if Van City is a cooperative, they couldn't become a B Corp. And in fact, they can become a certified B Corp. They're not able to become a benefit corporation. Okay, so just, because, mm, and that's where it gets confusing because yeah, yeah. they're very similar, but they're very different. Okay, so just I just wanted to share some of those just so that you know. One of the things that if you buy yogurt, if you buy Ocos or you buy Danong or you buy Activity, uh, Activia, though um, Danong, and the reason I call them out is because Danong is the very first multinational to actually become B Corp certified, and they're doing so division by division by division. Their goal is that 100% of the company will become B Corp certified going forward. So they've already, um, if you actually look at their yogurt, they actually have the certified B Corp symbol on it. They also have on some of their marketing materials. Um, but I wanted to share that because that is a uniqueness of Denong in that certification process because they are the largest corporate entity that is undergoing that. But they themselves are not yet a benefit corp and they are not completely certified B Corp. But Denon Canada, Denon North America, Denon Water, they are all certified B Corps at this point. So it's it's a lovely one. When you actually look at this, um, when when we kind of think about this this whole 
change, what I wanted to share is that there, this is a movement. This is not something that's static. This is not something that your business is going to be able to do and just stay the same forever. This is something that you get on in it, you, you ride the waves. And you, I would love for you to join the waves with me, but you include that social consciousness with your business acumen to actually create an amazing outcome. Now, one of the biggest challenges that I face when I work with clients is the money mindset mindset shift. I told, I talked a little bit before about profit and most people think that making profit if you are a purpose-driven business is a bad thing. If you have, if you have more profit, you have more ability to do more with it. That's the benefit. It is more than philanthropy. It's not just giving a donation here or a donation there. It is integrating all of these measures into the core operations. And it actually, when you do that, it actually drives profit, it drives change, and it actually it ripples out. So money mindset shift is profit and purpose equal greater impact. It's an easy thing to remember. Profit, purpose, Add them together, you've got more impact because it's at a core level. So what you want to do is always link what you do in your business with the impact you want to make in the world. So you're, if you link operations to your vision, mission, and values, and many, many businesses go off kilter from that. They don't remember to actually link the two. So if you have a vision and a mission and you have clear values and you integrate them, you are going, you, your operations align with that, you're actually going to accelerate your, your results. You also want to link your actions and the results that you get to communication. Communication in my mind is key. So when uh, Roger asked the question, why can't, how does a millennial get a boomer to actually start to adopt the triple line, or triple bottom line, communication, number one criteria. As people become, they hear it, they see it, they learn about it, and that's why I'm on a mission to share this with everybody because it's through communication that this wave will pick up steam. Results, you want your results to click with your transparency and quality improvement. I talked about the fact that if you wanted to become a certified B Corp, you have to have a score no less than 80. When you go to recertify, they want to see that score higher. Continual quality improvement is part of an impact business. This is a constant trying to do better and to do more as we go forward. And that doesn't necessarily have to cost you more, it just becomes a new habit. You also have result, or you also want to link donations to revenues. I had a client who was so purpose driven, so focused on making sure that all of these things, these purposes that she wanted to, to um, support were well taken care of, that she forgot to look at the status of her business and her business was declining fast and furious. She was driving everything out the door and not building the foundation strong enough to withstand that. I actually had to pull back her business in such a way that we rebuilt the foundation of her business, she accelerated her profits, and then she was able to actually give back more. It was a complete repositioning of her business. We also had to look internally from her communication style and her systems in order to actually make that the purpose that she was so passionate about actually emanated through her team so that they could buy in and they actually helped in that manner. So one of the, the, the comments earlier was like, was about if you um, have a, a, how to link a business with a nonprofit. And I, I just wanna say is this would be the place that you could actually link it, is that not only could a nonprofit become a shareholder, but it can be set up like a social enterprise. So the for-profit business is like a social enterprise to the nonprofit where all of their, a, a certain percentage of their, their funds are actually funneled directly to that nonprofit to fund operations. 
uh, within the nonprofit. So you can actually link them in an amazing way. And it's, it's making sure that you actually do it at a fundamental level. So it, it actually can be done and there's different options um, available for you to do that. But I wanted to kind of just link back to that, that comment. Um, but linking to me is, is part of the, the success. And this was just um, John uh, Mackey uh, from Whole Foods made a really good point. It echoes what we've heard from the group of CEOs that we really need to know that businesses are not just in the market to make profit, but they are actually going to be doing more. And so I loved that. So how can you, as a business owner, integrate three key strategies that are actually going to set you up for success? no matter how far along you want to go on that impact business spectrum. The number one place to start, and I, I know everybody's heard this many times, you need to have a clear vision, mission, and, and clarity on your values. If you're an impact business, this is even more important, and your vision and mission need to have impact statements. So what does that look like? Here's mine, I thought I'd share mine. Ignite Leadership collaborates with business leaders to create a positive social impact, transform their organization, and create main, meaningful workplaces where people love to work while business grows and thrives. Our more than green approach drives our efforts to consistently deliver on our promise, be a great business partner, great citizens, and environmentally responsible. I had to rewrite that and rewrite that and rewrite that so many times because people kept saying, I don't hear I don't hear the impact, I don't hear the impact until we got it. My more than green approach actually underpins everything in my business. How I do business, how I operate, how I do my donations, everything. So I actually named it and I named it more than green because I actually named it way back in 2007. And at the time, social responsibility was a, a big topic and people were talking about profit and they were talking about the environment. And I kept saying, but what about the people? So it was more than green. And so it stuck because I actually would describe it to people and then it just stuck. So that's how more than green actually came to be. But that's an example. In this one, here's Patagonia's vision. We're in the business to save our home planet. Everything they do has an environmental component to it. And here's Danone Canada's. We believe our world is ripe for change in the way we eat, drink and connect um, and do business. To achieve this, it's our job to find new, more sustainable ways of working while helping reconnect people with the food they eat in order to nourish lives and build a healthier world. There's all different ways that you can state your impact, but if you don't have an impact statement in your vision and mission, you may want to go back and actually relook at it. But those are just a couple that I thought I would share that uh, different, different components. So you want to reevaluate re your vision, mission, and you want to know your values and you want to link, you want to link to that. Looking at your supply chain. What is your supply chain? How can you reduce, reuse, repair, and recycle? Okay, repair is now in there, particularly because clothing is the number one thing going to landfills. And so if we can repair clothing and have them have a second life by donating them, then we actually are reducing the landfill. It's a great option. Buying local. How many times can you buy local? Being a conscious consumer yourself and in your business. Buying from other businesses that are making an impact. Audit your suppliers as a business. Ask them questions. What social impacts are they doing? How are they treating their employees? If you, can, if you know employees, what, what's their inside perspective? And reduce your carbon footprint. I'm actually just in the finishing stages of actually having a carbon footprint tracker that will be for small business that will actually link to an online carbon calculator and you'll be able to actually measure your carbon footprint and actually set goals. So that's something that I'm actually working on <coughs> to actually do that. Yes. Is there a list of uh, certified corporations? Yes, there is on the website um, uh, b, uh, bcorporation.net and it's actually in the um, ebook that I have for you guys tonight. So um, I'll, I'll share that with you shortly. Mm -hmm. Pay it forward. This is an easy one for every business. So these are my top three strategies, but you can volunteer and you can mentor, track your hours. If you have team members in your company, 
track their hours too, report on that. I, I, I um, to date for 2019, I have volunteered or mentored for in excess of 100 hours. And that was at the last quarter. I still haven't done this quarter. Share your expertise, share your resources. So if you have a truck that could be used by maybe a nonprofit, that might be a resource that they actually need. Could you actually donate that truck to them for use when you're not using it? It's a great opportunity. Be earthwise. So that's looking at where can you actually be a better um, and more responsible business owner? And how can you donate to either a charity or a cause? I always say if you're going to do that, try and link them to the purpose and the vision and the mission of your business so that it has more impact and aligns better. Mine is all people oriented. I have a story with each of mine that I've chosen. I actually picked four because having worked in the nonprofit world, I couldn't pick one because they all need money. So I picked four. <laughs> We really want to ensure that business is successfully um, linked. And so I hope that what I've shared tonight gives you a start on what we're actually doing and that we can make what the communities that we live in richer and more fulfilling um, as, as we go forward. I would love the opportunity to collaborate. So if anybody has any questions, any opportunities, my goal is to be a disruptor through business by changing the world, by changing the rules of business. And these are just some of the things. So be, um, becoming a certified B Corp is just one of those options. But I also have um, a, an online course called the Impact Business Blueprint, which is a great um, starter course for people. It introduces you and actually gets you moving along. I always say if you can take a few baby steps at a low cost, you actually then can pick up speed um, as you go forward. So every program, every service that I offered has a 2% give back as that's tied direct to gross revenues. So my top line revenues, 2% always goes to charity. So if you pay me a thousand dollars, you know, $20 automatically never saw, saw me at all. It just went through the door and into my charities. So I do that on a regular basis and I've been doing that now for, um, almost 10 years. For those of you online, I have a very special gift and this is my five simple business strategies to spark impact and change, uh, ignite change. It takes you through my spark framework and how you as a business owner can actually start to take those steps um, going forward. In answer to one of the questions here tonight is, you know, how, how would you know um, to learn more about who is a certified B Corp. Um, I've actually put together a resource list that each that is now um, with, with my ebook, and it will actually allow you to, to um, create the, sort of a greater library. My resource list is actually a work in progress, so I just want to give you that. And if you sign up for that at the link there, you also can book a 30 minute uh, conversation with me, and we can have a look at your impact business um, uh, sort of idea and what steps might be the, the best for you going forward. So that I hope will give each and every one of you an opportunity to get started and make a difference in the world. Remember, my goal is to change the rules of business by changing the world through business. So thank you very much. Next. simply just change the current status of the corporation into a benefits corporation as a baby step starting down